G'day everyone. A couple of weeks back, I did a video uh, about AI alignment. And what prompted me to do that was I was watching a bunch of YouTube videos about um, Sam Altman, uh, Dario, some of these big AI names talking about how we've got to be safe and that the AI models are trained for safety. But it made me think, especially when Deep Seek came about, uh, that this they got a lot of competition going on, and I thought, hold on, we're talking about safety, and then they're talking about beating China and then corporate profits, and I sort of thought, AI alignment, who are we aligning for? And it correlated with a big payout to the taxi industry in Australia in December, um, and what I thought was that a $70 cab ride in, say, 2003 before the rideshare companies would stay here in Australia. And then this big disruption came and now the same $70 cab ride means that you know, 20 or 30% of it goes off short of these big American companies. And I thought this AI alignment is great, but really what it's going to do is feed these big American companies with profits and businesses, local businesses, real estate, accounting, whatever it may be that live across the world, not just in Australia, but across the world, would suffer because these AI is such a transformative technology that it would we'd build agents and these companies would offer things that would um, fundamentally take money away from the local economies and you know reduce jobs and all that sort of stuff. And I thought, oh my word, that's a real that's a real existential threat. But then I really started to see uh, Deep Seek change the way the world thought about it. And I started to change my mind. And then what I did was I set up Olama on my local PC and I downloaded DeepSeek and ran it on my local machine. I downloaded the latest Meta uh, 3.3 on my local machine and it's pretty damn good. But I unplugged the internet and it still works. So I've got a large language model that's not connected to the internet and I then started to set up a thing called N8N, which is this automation tool. Now, what dawned on me is now what I could do is build all of this really cool stuff here. And then I'm starting to think about, well, can I train these models? And then, of course, I went on to Hugging Face and some of the other, um, uh, and Olama, and there's all these post-trained models. So they've taken these models from international, these open source models. They've trained them on whatever. And I thought, wow, we can do that. So let's say I've got a client that's in accounting or you know, real estate or insurance um, manufacturing, and they come to me with a really unique set of stuff and they want um, AI to help you know drive efficiencies in their business. And I thought, we can do this now, but we don't have to pay these big American companies. Now, obviously, you've got to have a computer either here or in the cloud, and it does need some setting up to make it really, really cool, but it's something that someone like SSW can do. And I thought, wow, that's going to open the door because uh, the big American companies are great and there's going to be premium offerings, and I'm sure they're going to come out with some fabulous products. But right now, if you've got a, for instance, you know, an account like um, real estate, Real estate is very local uh, for countries like Australia, the UK, Europe, across the world. It's very, very local. Um, and you've got a particular use case to do something like valuations or something that's that's very local. You can build a really cool workflow and you train it on local data. You can host it locally, host it on your own computer if it runs fast enough and do something really quite cool locally uh, for not huge, huge money. And it made me think, wow, this isn't going to be off to the US. And um, I listened to a podcast recently, and the guy on the podcast, uh, Scott Galloway, was talking about how um, industries like airlines and even PCs, they were, you know, when you can fly halfway around the world, it was crazy um, when this technology came around to think that we can, you know, uh, fly to the other side of the world for you know not a lot of money, but not a lot of 
airline companies now make a ton of money. It's not a very profitable business. Now, there are profitable businesses, but it's not the, the Uber where money is sucked offshore. It's uh, a, And same with making PCs. But, you know, those desktop computers are great, but wow, uh, they're not that super profitable. And there's a lot of names that were in the industry back in the early 2000s, Compaq and Dell's still around, but there's a lot of names that aren't around still because it became a pretty commoditized business. Um, but there's a lot of local uh, computer companies in my suburb, um, and you can go down and buy computer parts. It's not a huge, you're never going to be a billionaire doing that sort of thing. But these big tech billionaires, um, you know, become billionaires because they create a product or a service where not just their local community, but all across the world, we buy their products and it hoovers up to these 0.001%. So I'm a little bit more bullish on AI that it can be something that can help everybody. Um, so I've changed my mind. What about you?